What's going on guys? For about the past two weeks, I've had the opportunity to try out the new Yes Welder Cut 55 DS Plasma Cutter. And if you guys are like me, you've seen the commercials for Yes Welder, but you've never actually had the chance to try one out before you buy it. So since I've got to try it out, let me tell you guys what I think about it. Check it out. About a month ago, the company Yes Welder reached out to me out of the blue and they told me they're just trying to get an online presence, they're trying to get their name out there in the welding community, and they asked if I would like for them to give me a plasma cutter. And I said, yes, I would like that. And obviously in my type of garage, having a plasma cutter would make a ton of sense. I just never owned one before. So I'm gonna do this review. If I didn't already own it, would I buy it? That's what this review is about. So let's start off with the bad. Easily my biggest complaint about this plasma cutter is the instructions. The instructions are not very good. The flip side to that coin is you don't really need the instructions because this thing doesn't really seem to care what air pressure you set it to. I'm running it between 90 and 50 on the indicated air pressure on the front. Almost no issues. It doesn't really complain. And I'm cutting pretty thick steel. Most of what I'm cutting is 3 16 if I cut anything thinner than that, I just leave it at full power, just like I would with the 316s. It all seems to cut fine. And the setup of this plasma cutter was easy, about five minutes and this thing was ready to go out of the box. So the instructions are no good, but do you really need them? First impression, it's a pretty nice looking machine. I know that doesn't really make any difference to a lot of people, but if you're gonna have something sitting around your shop, you don't necessarily want it to be ugly. Again, no big deal, but it is pretty small and pretty lightweight. I really enjoy that, especially if you're gonna be going mobile, which sometimes you have to do. And the other thing about going mobile is you can plug it into 110 volts. That's awesome. But you can also run it 220 volts with the adapter. While it is very convenient to be able to run this machine on 110 volts, it significantly diminishes the capacity to cut. So you're always better off when able to run it with 220 volts because you're gonna be able to cut thicker metal better. If you're unfamiliar with plasma cutters, I'll give you the cliff notes. Basically, they're just a quick and efficient way of cutting metal. So it uses an electric arc, just like a welder, to melt the material, and then it uses compressed air to shoot the material away, leaving a really clean cut. And wherever you move the torch, it's gonna melt it just like that. It's sort of like using an oxyacetylene torch, except for there's no bottles of oxygen and acetylene. This, you just need electricity and air, and it works really well. So I've seen a few different numbers for the duty cycle. Probably the most realistic one I saw was about 30% duty cycle. So if you're using a plasma cutter for 10 minutes, you're supposed to only use it for three and a half minutes and let it cool down the other six and a half. And of course the duty cycle is rated for full power. So if you bring the power level down so you don't run it at full amperage, you're able to run it for longer. But one of the benefits to this machine specifically is it has thermal overload protection. So if it thinks you're using it too much and it's gonna start damaging components, it's going to turn the plasma cutter off so you're not able to actually do damage to your machine. Really valuable. Not every machine has that. I'm really glad this one does. And the reason I'm so excited about that is because I've been known to get wrapped up in my work and forget to stop using a welder. And I have burned up welders by ignoring the duty cycle. So having built in thermal overload protection could potentially save your machine from catastrophic damage. That's why it's so beneficial. So this plasma cutter has a non-contact pilot arc. What that means is you don't actually have to touch your workpiece to get the arc going. You just pull the trigger and the arc actually comes out and that's not unusual for a plasma cutter to have it, but it is unusual for a plasma cutter this inexpensive to have it. So that's one of the advantages of getting this particular plasma cutter for this price point. That's an added feature that you wouldn't necessarily get in a different unit. So in general, the plasma cutter works really well. I love the ergonomics of the handle. They're not all that ergonomic and it's got instant power delivery. So you pull that trigger, you're gonna have all the power that you need right away. I love that. Since I am not that skilled with the plasma cutter, I struggle with doing straight lines and keeping the distance away from the workpiece. So sometimes making jigs will help facilitate a straighter cut or following a path that you specifically want. And in this particular case, I made the jig out of wood. And so when I'm done with the cut, it follows that line perfectly. So cutting jigs work great, especially if you're gonna mass produce something, it's really handy to have a jig that you can just put down on the material and follow along with it with the torch. But wouldn't it be handy if Say I made like a track system with bearings. 
so the torch will only go along this track and it can't deviate pitch or yaw at all. That would be pretty cool, right? And maybe, what if I put stepper motors on it so you could make a consistent speed so it'll go in a straight line and a consistent speed? You'd be able to get basically a perfect cut out of it. And maybe, if I put it on two separate tracks, one going one way, one going the other, so you have infinite two-dimensional variability. And that would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? So I mentioned how valuable the non-contact arc start is, but for a CNC plasma table, it's almost essential because for a CNC plasma table, you want the torch to be a little bit above the material. So if you had to touch it every time, it overcomplicates things a lot. So this particular plasma cutter worked really well for this conversion. It was super easy to hack it to make it work. I'm not gonna go too into detail because I'm gonna do a full separate build video on that. That's not what this video is about. So we're gonna move on from there. But overall, dealing with the company Yes Welder in general, if you forget about the plasma cutter, the company itself was really easy to deal with. And when they said they were gonna give me a plasma cutter, I told them, I'm gonna modify this thing and turn it into a CNC plasma table. And they said, do what you're gonna do and do the videos the way you want to do. And I'm really happy with that. But back to the plasma cutter. So I don't consider myself a plasma cutting expert. But I've used a good few plasma cutters, and in general, they're all basically the same. So there are ones that have a lot higher power, and those ones are obviously going to cut thicker metal better. But in general, in terms of actually getting in and using them, they all work basically the same. At the end of the day, what matters to me, and that, probably what matters to everybody else, is price. This thing retails for about 400 bucks. It clearly gets the job done. That's what I care about. And for the money, I think this is a really good unit. I'm not saying that this is the end all be all for DIY plasma cutters, but I think it's well worth the price. So I'm not gonna stand here and tell you guys to do anything. From my perspective, if I didn't already own this plasma cutter after having it for about two weeks, would I buy it? And yes, I would. Initially, my first thought was, I'm not familiar with Yes Welder. I want to make sure that other people are having a good experience with this machine before I spend the money. There's nothing wrong with the price point. I think $400 is more than fair. They're on sale all the time. There's lots of coupon codes out there. And as a matter of fact, if you want to buy one of these, you can use coupon code STRANGE at checkout for 10% off the purchase of your machine. And uh, just so you guys are aware, I do get a little bit of money in my pocket if you purchase with that coupon code, but I'm not telling you guys to do anything. If you want to buy this machine and you've done the research already, there's no reason not to use the coupon code because it's just going to save you money if you're already going to buy this machine. Do what you're going to do. I think it's probably worth the money. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and thanks always for doing your part to help make this world a strange place. <laughs>